Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England here in the UK and welcome to my latest video. In this one, now that summer is upon us and there's plenty of affordable fruit around, I thought I'd do a video on how I make my strawberry jam. It's not difficult to do and it's fun to make. There is a few rules you'll need to follow and a couple of pieces of equipment you'll want to make life easier but not absolutely essential. I'll explain as we go. And here's a list of the ingredients I'll be using in this recipe. Right, I'll start by washing, hulling and chopping two kilos, that's four and a half pounds of strawberries. I rescued these particular berries from my son's catering business because they were destined for the bin as they wouldn't have lasted another day. So I'd be using these. But it would be better to use slightly underripe berries. But these are good enough for me and as we see in the northeast, they're all right for now. To keep the waste down to a minimum, hull and chop the washed strawberries with a small paring knife like I'm doing in the video. A lot of jam recipes call for an equal amount of sugar as fruit, but I personally think that's too much. I use 75% sugar of the total weight of fruit. For example, if I have one pound of fruit, I use three quarters of a pound of sugar. In this case, I have two kilograms, that's 72 ounces of strawberries, so I need 1.5 kilograms or 54 ounces of sugar. And to make it a bit clearer, I'll show you on the calculator how it works. Right, say you acquire 60 ounces of fruit, all you have to do is enter 60 in the calculator and multiply that by 75% and that tells you you need 45 ounces of sugar. If I did that same weight in grams it would be 1700 grams so I'll multiply that by 75% and the answer is 1275 grams of sugar needed. Now my recipe is 2,000 grams or 2 kilograms. Multiply that by 75% and that tells me I need 1,500 grams of sugar. Mathematics in jam making. Marvellous. Once the sugar hits these ripe strawberries it immediately starts drawing out the juice and that in turn begins to dissolve the sugar and the whole lot starts to macerate or become mostly a liquid and this takes about two hours. I'm going to leave mine in the fridge overnight. Okay, for me it's the next morning and I'm just about ready to start making jam. And as you can see the strawberries and sugar have just about become liquidised and the aroma is absolutely wonderful. Before I start cooking the recipe I need to wash and sterilise the jam jars. And as the caption says, this batch of strawberry jam should fill five 300 grams, that's 10 and a half ounce jars, but just in case five isn't enough, I'll be washing and sterilizing six, just to be on the safe side. I've used a tablespoon of baby bottle sterilizing liquid in hot water and let the jars and the lid soak for 10 minutes. Now I'll rinse them in clean hot water and dry them with a clean paper towel. Then they'll need to go into the oven at 120 Celsius, that's 250 Fahrenheit, for 20 minutes. This is to make sure that they're bacteria free. Unfortunately, I can't put the lids in the oven because they're plastic lined. But the sterilising fluid should have been enough for those. I'm just making doubly sure with the glass jars. To avoid thermal shock and the risk of the glass cracking, put the jars in a cold oven and then turn it on, so that the glass heats up slowly over 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes is up, turn off the heat and leave them in the oven until needed. Now 
Now this is where you have to be very careful as to what size pan you're going to use to cook the jam in. If you use a small shallow pan I guarantee it'll boil over. So make sure your pan is wide and deep enough. Check out the dimensions of the pot I'm using for the amount of fruit and sugar in this recipe. Right, I'll finally get started on the recipe. First job is to juice the lemon and set it aside. Not only does the lemon juice help set the jam, it helps prevent the growth of bacteria after the jam has been canned or jarred. You can use bottled lemon juice too. Now I use a quarter teaspoon of pectin powder in my jams, especially strawberry, because it doesn't contain a lot of natural pectin. If you don't have any pectin powder, or you just don't want to use it, you can add a peeled and finely chopped green apple to the jam, or the juice of another half lemon. Right, I'll empty the strawberries and sugar into the pan and scrape out any sugar that's settled at the bottom of the bowl. Now place the pan on a medium heat. You'll also need something to stir the jam. I like to use this flat wooden spoon. It's great for stirring jams, toffee, caramel, etc. In fact, I've been using this very spoon for over 30 years. Now I'll be using this digital thermometer in this video. If you don't have one, not to worry, I'll show you how to make this jam without a thermometer. OK, add the lemon juice and the pectin powder if you're using it. And by the way, I bought this pectin powder online for about £5 and there's enough powder in this tub to last me for years. OK, if you're not using a thermometer, put a clean saucer in the freezer at the start of the recipe. This is to test the jam for a set a little later in the video. And if you want to know how that works, just out of interest, you can put one in too. This is my candy thermometer. I'm not using it in this recipe, but I just want to show you what temperature you need to reach for the setting point for jam. And it's 105 Celsius, that's 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'll bring the jam to a steady boil. And just out of interest, once it starts boiling, I'll set a stopwatch to see how long this batch takes to reach that target temperature of 105 Celsius, that's 220 Fahrenheit. Right, after only 10 minutes you can see exactly why you need a big enough pan, as it's almost reached the top of this one. Twenty minutes have passed and the temperature has reached almost 102 Celsius, that's 212 Fahrenheit. Basically what's happening is the water in the fruit is slowly evaporating and it's the water that keeps the overall temperature down. So as more and more water evaporates, the hotter the jam gets. And the trick is to stop the heat as soon as it hits that target temperature of 105 Celsius, that's 220 Fahrenheit. Making toffee, caramel and candy is exactly the same process, only they reach temperatures much hotter than this jam. Don't use one of these infrared laser thermometers when making jam, as they can only read surface temperatures, and as you can see it's only reading 93 Celsius. After 40 minutes you can see a visible change in the jam, and it's starting to thicken up a bit. The jam's about 103 Celsius at this point, that's 217 Fahrenheit, and it's not far away. This is when you really need to concentrate as the temperature starts to rise quickly. If you're not using a thermometer, this is when you should do your first saucer test. Very carefully put a teaspoon of jam on the cold saucer and put it in the fridge for a minute.
After 45 minutes the jam is just about done. Check the first saucer test you took a couple of minutes ago by running your finger through the middle of the jam and as you can see it's still a bit runny. So do another test as it's now a few minutes since the last one and put it in the fridge for a moment. Now according to my thermometer this jam is now done after 52 minutes from it starting to boil. Now I'll turn off the gas and put the lid on. If you're using an electric cooker take it off the hot plate altogether. And that last test I took should pass the finger test easily. I call it the Moses test. Part in the Red Sea? No? Oh well. And that last sample test feels much better. So this final saucer test is spot on with the final temperature I took. Once you've done this jam a few times you'll get to know what to look for. But the best way is to get yourself a good digital thermometer. It's handy to have in the kitchen anyway for all sorts of applications. Right, it's been cooling for 5 minutes while I got everything ready to start jarring or canning up the jam. This jam jar funnel is very useful for filling the jars. Make sure you sterilise it and any other equipment that you're using. Ok, simply fill the jars to the top and pop on one of those little waxed paper discs and screw the lid on tight while the jam is still hot. I got the paper discs online and they were only about £1.50 for 250 discs. And that's where I'm going to stop. But if you wanted to go a step further, you could sterilise the filled jars by standing them on a rack completely submerged in a large pan of simmering water for 10 minutes. I suppose then it becomes a preserve. And there's lots of videos out there on how to do that part of the sterilising process. But as they are, these will keep in the fridge for up to six months. And as I give these away to family and friends, they'll only last a week or two at the most. I design and print my own labels, but you can buy those too. And that's about all there is to tell. And you've ended up with five jars of top quality strawberry jam. And all I need to do now is the taste test. And what better than a slice of hot toast cut from my whole wheat farmhouse loaf with some of my delicious homemade butter. This jam's still a bit warm, that's why it's a bit runny, but that's not going to stop me. After 24 hours it'll set up pretty firm, <laughs> but I can't wait that long. And what more can you say? Definitely a thumbs up. Well thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.